Welcome back to the Yes Functional Longevity Podcast. We give you insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. Hi, my name is Chris Porta, best-selling author of Get Stronger, Live Longer, the Yes Perks Guide to Training for Longevity, and owner of Yes Fitness. Coming to you live from down here at Yes Fitness. I may have to adjust my camera. Coming on board today and listen to what I have to say. We're going to talk about fall prevention a little bit. Two things. Uh, housekeeping. Number one, tonight is our celebration of our D2S, our Drop Two Sizes Challenge. Uh, that's where they came in. A pair of jeans that they could not button. The buttons were nowhere near each other. And eight weeks later, they were able to button them and comfortably. And you know that's why we do this that's why we're in this business we're not, it's not so much about changing body compositions and 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 you know losing fat and that type of stuff like that it's just helping people achieve their goals and feeling good about themselves the the uh, reaction that we get tonight is priceless because when they started they thought no way this is going to get done and we've changed their mindset and we've changed the way that we eat a little bit and we've changed their exercise habits and their sleep habits and certainly the hydration and all these different things and they put them on and they feel great and they feel great about themselves they feel great about their accomplishments and it's why I'm in the business I'm in the business helping people change their lives and this is one of our most successful if not the most successful challenge that we do we've done it for years and tonight is one of my favorite nights because the, the reaction that I get and receive from the participants is just truly amazing. And it's hard to describe um, when you, unless you've really helped someone change their life, if you really help someone, you know, help them accomplish a goal that they couldn't accomplish or they've tried to accomplish many times in life and haven't been able to do, um, it's hard to describe that feeling. So that's the first bit of... Um, Housekeeping. The second bit of housekeeping is if you are around and you know this, you don't know this, um, we are closed for Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving. So we close those two days. They're, they're family days. Um, you know, people should be gathering together, especially after what happened last year with COVID, getting together and just enjoying family and friends. We're reopening again on Saturday for our normally scheduled classes. It's typically a quiet day. Because again, people just take that weekend and just kind of step back for a second and be thankful for what they have and be grateful for what they have. And that's, I think that's more important than trying to be open a lot of hours and trying to cram some exercise in. But we do have our, our Burn the Bird on Thanksgiving morning, which is um, a special workout we do. Um, it's open to anyone and our um, clients bring, typically bring family and friends with them to participate. And it's a whole lot of fun. We have a little food drive with that um, so we can help feed the, the needy. And uh, it's just a great day, great way to start off the Thanksgiving. It's early in the morning. Everybody's home in time to get the bird in the oven and uh, have the rest of the festivities for the day. So that's our housekeeping for today. Um, if you're interested in the bird and the bird and you want to come down and check out what we do, just let me know and um, get you on board. So, And if you do have any non-perishable items that you want to donate to the food bank, the Burlington Food Bank. Bring them on down. Um, we'll get them over to them. Uh, I heard it's, they just had a drive. It's pretty full over there. So if you can, try to bring something like a whole meal in a can. That's what they asked us to do. So that's what you have for our housekeeping today. So today we're going to talk about power and, and, and um, fall prevention. We've talked about this before, but I'll give you a little demonstration of what we do to help with our fall prevention. And we're actually going to use this beach ball. But before I get into the beach ball, I just want to review uh, the most important aspects of fall prevention and balance training and the ability to stop yourself from falling. So the absolute number one thing that you need to improve is your strength. It's strength. It's more important than standing with your eyes closed or standing on one leg or um, you know, standing on some unstable surface like a BOSU or sitting on a stability ball. The BOSU and stability ball, really, really don't build balance. They really don't build core strength. All they do is help you get better at that one particular activity. Um, the most important thing you can do is build your strength by far. That's what all the research shows. That's what we try to do. That's what we try to teach down here. 
And it's real important um, because when we take a look at power, and power is what you need to stop, stop that fall, prevent that fall, power is force times velocity. Force being your strength, your ability to move an object. That object is yourself. So if you want to just some ideas of what you would do with that, you would want to make sure that you're doing lunges, you want to make sure you're doing squats, you want to make sure you're doing some hip hinges, you want to make sure that you're doing some single leg stance work, like a step up. All things we do in our programming here all the time, we don't miss a week without any of those four movement patterns. The lower body is important. You also want to make sure you're developing strength in your upper body. Because you need to be able to catch yourself from a fall sometime, and if you do fall, you want to be able to help yourself get back up. So we do all the basic movement patterns, horizontal push, vertical push, horizontal roll, vertical roll. All that stuff is important for fall prevention. Um, but once you develop that strength, once you develop the strength, you need to be able to utilize it, okay? You need to be able to utilize it quickly. So some other drills that we do, because we want the, the, the mind and the feet to continue to work well, right? is we do some ladder drills, some ladder drills to help develop some lower body power. So we have some strength, but now we need able to quickly, that's the velocity part of the power is force times velocity. So we have power, pardon me, this um, power equals force times velocity. So force is our strength that we're working on and the velocity is our speed that we're working on. So how do we work on our speed? Our upper body work, we use our medicine balls. We don't typically do Olympic lifts here. Uh, it's kind of dangerous in the sense of the clientele that we work with, and it can be very complex and complicated to do, so we use some simple things that we do. We throw medicine balls, whether at the floor or the wall, for some upper body power, some plyometric push-ups, and lower body power. We do some hops, which is a single leg, single leg jump, or we do some jumps, or we do some agility ladder work, stepping in and out of the ladder, that helps the mind talk to the feet and all that kind of stuff. So that gives us velocity, right? So we have the two parts of the equation, but we need to kind of put them together some. And how do we put them together? It's called power. But we want to take a look at power differently than just being able to produce that force quickly, okay? I want you to think of it like this. This is the example that we use is if you're driving down the road and there's a tree across the road, right? And out in the distance you see a tree across the road, you're gonna slowly put your foot on the brake so you slow down enough so you don't hit that tree. But if you go driving down the road and that tree comes down real quick and you're gonna be able to move that foot really quick and get your foot on the brake, slam your foot on the brake so you don't hit that tree. That is being reactive. So when you do a ladder drill or when you jump or you hop or throw in a medicine ball, that's power, but you know what's coming. Mentally, you know that's what you're going to do. You know the foot pattern that you need to do in the ladder. You know the foot pattern you're going to do whether you're jumping or hopping. You know the foot pattern when you're going in and out of some cones. You know the pattern when you're throwing the ball, stuff like that. So you need to be able to be able develop that power reactively. It's something we call reactive power. We've talked about it before. You can look back at one of the previous podcasts where we talk a little bit more in depth about reactive power. But you need to be able to utilize that power, that strength, and that velocity or speed and not know it's coming. It's a surprise, right? When you go to fall, it's a surprise. You don't know that you're going to fall, right? If you, I mean, unless you're jumping off a cliff, right? You're, you don't know that you're going to fall. It just happens like that. And you need to be able to react, react like that and be able to utilize that strength and velocity or power, reactive power. So, We've incorporated it into our program now for quite some time now, and people have fun with it, they enjoy it, and they do definitely see a difference in their abilities from the beginning of the month to the end of the month when we do these reactive power drills. But how are you going to do this at home? Because typically some of the drills are like shuttle drills. We have to maybe shuttle one direction and someone says stop. Uh, so shuttle to your right, and they'll say, okay, left, and then you have to change to the left direction, shuttle right, shuttle left, or stop, forward, back. I mean, unless you have a partner to do that with that can give you some cues um, or just some hand signals, left, right, stop. It's not reactive, right? It's not reactive anymore. You know it's coming, so you can plan for it. Mentally, you're planning for it, but we want it to be reactive. So uh, another tool that we use in here, and, and Clients have a lot of fun with this, is a beach ball. So I'm going to go through a couple things with you that we do actually do in class. 
that we use for reactive power. So the first thing we do is, first thing we did was, I can't demonstrate because I don't have someone else with me with me, right? But they would just play volleyball with the beach ball because the beach ball, when it goes back and forth from one person to the other person, it's not this smooth thing. It, it moves bound like, a, like almost like a, a wiffle ball, right? It takes different patterns. So what you can do is, if you don't have a partner is put that ball against the wall. So let's see if we got enough height here with my camera. We do. So you just take the ball and just bounce off the ball back and forth, keeping your eye on it, okay? And it's making, you can see I'm reacting side to side a little bit. My hands have to move a little bit because I don't really know where the ball is going to go. I have a little bit of an idea, but I don't really know exactly where the ball is going to go. It's a whole lot of fun if you're doing that with a second person, okay? It's a whole lot of fun. And it really forces you to have to move a little bit, react some. And it gets your feet moving quick, it makes your upper body moving quick, and it actually will help increase your reactive power. To utilize that strength that you've developed, and utilize that speed that you've developed, or the velocity you've developed to actually create some power. So we also do a drill now, utilize that speed that you've developed, or the velocity you've developed to actually create some power. So we also do a drill now where it's not just upper body. We don't know what the angle is and we have to move. We'll switch sides, we make sure we use them both feet. But if you don't have a partner to do this with, you do it yourself just like this. Put that ball on the wall, kick it from here to there, back and forth. And it makes you have to react. It forces you to move. It forces you to move in ways that you're not ready for, you're not prepared for. And that's one of the keys to it. Now, it doesn't take a lot of force here, okay? We're just small force because we're trying to stop and start and decelerate, accelerate, back and forth, kicking the ball like that. But it helps us with our just reaction time and our reaction ability. So, if you don't have a ball, come on down. I'll give you one. We have plenty of balls down here. We use them all the time. But it's really a simple, easy way for you to help prevent falls. So, try it. Go slow, go easy in the beginning, and then as you get better at it, kick the ball a little bit harder, a little bit further, play around, make up your own drills. We play volleyball sometimes, but like I said, it's a whole lot of fun. And you'll find that one day you're going to go to move because you're getting ready to fall, and your foot will be able to hold to catch you. That is, if you've been doing the strength portion of it correctly. Okay, Because it's not just about moving the feet quickly, we have to have that power, that strength, to actually have the power to stop the fall. If you have any questions on this, always give me a call, leave a message on the Facebook here, stop by, I'd be happy to help you with that. It's uh, ingrained in our programming to prevent falls. Um, you need to start working on it at any age, at any age, so. There you go, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to what I have to say, and uh, I hope you have a great evening. It's getting a little dark out earlier these, these days, which is not a whole lot of fun. But um, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So, You guys have a great night. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next week.